order to get ready for this exam, and I've said this on several occasions throughout this course, you need to regularly be scoring 90% or better on all your practice exams so that you can be successful. If you find yourself memorizing questions, though, in your endeavor to reach that score, make sure you get additional test questions. And there are a number of resources, whether it's us or other people, that you can use on the market for that. Make sure, though, that you take the different sections of this course multiple times to help you study and take the quizzes as many times as you need to hit those objectives. My name is Martin Vanderskow, and I'll be your instructor throughout this course. I have almost 30 years of experience in the field advising executives as well as helping people just like you prepare for the PMP exam. I've also been a state commissioner in the state of Colorado, my home state, working on very large projects in the IT industry of more than half a million dollars. I've served on the International Board of Directors of the Project Management Institute, and two of those years I was one of her three most senior officers. Throughout this course, I'll try to provide you insights where they provide most use to you to make sure you're ready to take the PMP exam. Our first chapter is looking at the PMP application and the exam itself. Be very careful. I get dozens of calls all the time from students who have taken this course and then have questions about where do they apply, what information should they give. Make sure you spend the time to really listen in on this section. All the answers that you need will be here. And it will save you an awful lot of time and heartache if you listen very carefully to the information we're going to provide you about the application itself. Throughout this course, we're going to take a look at the application itself to get certified, the exam, and see then what kind of questions you have to deal with. We'll get into some basics of project management, and then we'll focus in on the 10 knowledge areas spend some time talking about professional responsibility, and throughout this course, we will take a ton of practice exams. The number one thing that you can do to prepare for this certification is to take a lot of practice exams. Now, be very careful as we go through the process. If you find yourself memorizing questions and answers, it's time to get yourself a new set of practice questions. Our goal here is to make sure you clearly understand the knowledge without simply memorizing answers to specific questions. As hard as we try, it is impossible for us to exactly replicate what you're going to see on the exact exam. In fact, it's a violation of PMI's rules for any education provider to ask any student about the specific questions that they saw on the exam. While it's perfectly acceptable for us to ask general information, we don't know the exact questions. Finally, it's important to note that PMI's exam test bank has more than 3,000 exam questions in it. No two exams ever look exactly alike. Therefore, we have to prepare you for every possible type of question. What that's going to mean to you is when you get into your actual exam, and are looking at those 200 questions, you're going to find a number of topics that we've covered in this course that quite likely you're not going to see anything about. Don't worry about that. The key is we've covered every possibility and so you can have confidence that you are fully prepared if you follow the instructions that we're about to give you. Let's begin by talking about a few general items. These I often call the freebies. They're potential questions actually, believe it or not, on the exam, and every single certificate holder ought to be able to get these right. The first one is what, in fact, do the letters PMP stand for? They stand for Project Management Professional. Now, this is a standard that PMI is out there advertising in every possible avenue. So the question you might ask yourself is, what are the benefits to you of having the three letters PMP after your name? According to PMI's research, first and foremost is higher income potential. 
In fact, according to PMI's research, they found that the average project manager who is certified makes between 16 and 24 percent more than someone who is not. Secondly, it shows that you actually know an international standard. Today, there are more than two million PMBOK guides in circulation. The acronym PMBOK stands for the Project Management Body of Knowledge. Now be very careful. A lot of people want to talk about the book as the PMBOK. That is an inaccuracy. The actual Project Management Body of Knowledge represents everything that's ever been written about the field of project management. That's literally tens of thousands of books and articles and, and now video and online content from all over the world. The PMBOK guide represents the internationally accepted standards for the profession. It is an aggregation of those ideas which are generally accepted, not necessarily best practice, but generally accepted throughout the industry. Today we're also seeing throughout the world more and more employers requiring PMPs for their project managers. In many cases, organizations use, quite frankly, the PMP as what we refer to as a gatekeeper credential. It's impossible to get the job unless you have the PMP, but simply being certified is not enough to get the employment opportunity. Remember, certification is not the same thing as qualification. In fact, most of you have had experiences where this has been true in other professions. How many of you have ever been to a doctor who had the bedside manner of a toad? Did you go back? Simple answer is no in most cases. But that doctor was board certified. They'd gone to school and they had the piece of paper hanging on the wall. Simply having the piece of paper is not enough to prove you can go do a good job. In most cases, the only way to prove you're capable of doing something is by actually doing it. What holding the PMP actually does for you is prove that you know what the standards of the profession of project management are. Additionally, remember, it is absolutely impossible to manage a project simply following the PMBOK guide. There are more than 30 major methodologies throughout the world that are fully PMBOK guide compliant. This includes everything from the PRINCE2 standard found in the United Kingdom to the more than 16 agile methodologies being pushed in the IT industry such as Scrum or Extreme Programming or Kanban or any number of others. All of those ideas fully comply with the professions of the standard that are now published in more than 13 different languages.